Do you ever feel like there's an invisible force holding you back from achieving financial prosperity? Well, you're not alone. In today's society, many of us carry certain beliefs and habits that unknowingly hinder our financial progress. From the influences of our educational system to cultural norms, we've been subtly guided towards fiscal behaviors that lead to financial struggles instead of abundance. But fear not, because we're here to break free from these limitations together. In this video, we'll delve deep into those ingrained narratives and behaviors that have been holding us back. By recognizing and challenging them, we'll pave the way for your journey toward financial literacy and the freedom to create lasting wealth. Get ready to shift your mindset from scarcity to abundance as we guide you step by step to unleash your full wealth potential. Are you ready to embrace a new perspective and take control of your financial future? Let's dive in and discover the path to true financial empowerment. Number one, the teaching that financial education is unnecessary. When we're young, we learn a lot of important subjects like math, science, and literature in school. These are essential for our education and understanding the world around us. But sometimes, we don't get much education about money and how to handle it wisely. We might not learn about things like budgeting, planning how to spend and save money, investing, putting money into things that can grow and earn more money, or understanding credit, knowing how to borrow money responsibly. Because of this, many people grow up without knowing how to manage their money well. They might make mistakes with spending or not save enough for the future. This can lead to financial problems that could have been avoided if they had learned about money earlier. But here's the important part. Understanding money and how to handle it is really important for our financial security and building wealth. It's like learning how to take care of a plant or a pet. If we learn how to do it properly, it can grow and thrive. Similarly, if we learn how to manage and invest our money wisely, it can grow and provide more opportunities for us in the future. Number two, promoting job security instead of entrepreneurship. In society, people often believe that having a traditional job is safer and more stable than starting their own business. This belief starts early in schools, where the focus is on preparing students for jobs rather than teaching them about entrepreneurship. Because of this, many people choose the security of a regular paycheck from a job rather than taking the risk of starting their own business, which can be uncertain and unpredictable. But here's the thing. Entrepreneurship has some amazing benefits. When you start your own business, there is no limit to how much money you can make. You have the opportunity to create something valuable that people want and that can lead to long-term wealth. On the other hand, traditional education often tells us that higher education is the only way to succeed and that certain degrees will guarantee a job. However, this way of thinking might not always be true. Some degrees might not lead to a clear career path and can be seen as misleading, like a Ponzi scheme. Real wealth comes from creating things that people need and want, like products or services. When you work for someone else as an employee, you help create wealth for them and their business. But when you're a business owner, you have the opportunity to create wealth for yourself and even for others who invest in your business. Number three, promoting instant gratification over delayed satisfaction. In today's world, we often hear about and see things that promise instant satisfaction. With just one click, we can buy things online and get them delivered the same day. This constant promotion of instant gratification makes us want things right away without thinking too much about the consequences. However, this mindset can be harmful to our financial health. It can lead us to buy things on impulse without considering if we really need them or if we can afford them. This can result in consumer debt, where we owe money for things we bought but can't pay for right away. This focus on instant gratification also makes us forget about planning for our future. Instead of saving and investing our money wisely, we spend it all on immediate wants and needs. We miss out on the benefits of compound gains, which means our money could grow much more over time if we wait and invest it wisely. On the other hand, if we practice delayed gratification, it means we are willing to wait and be patient. We might not get everything we want right away, but it can lead to accumulating wealth and having financial stability in the long run. One important thing to remember is that no matter how much money we earn, if we spend more than we make, 
we will always struggle financially. Personal finance is mostly about controlling our impulses to spend excessively, even when we have enough to cover our bills. Number four, cultivating a fear of calculated risks. Imagine life is like a game, and there are different paths you can take to win and achieve financial success. Some paths are safe and predictable, but they may not lead to big rewards. Others involve taking risks, like exploring new areas in the game. And while it can be scary, these risks have the potential to bring you great rewards and help you get rich. As kids, we're often taught to play it safe and not take risks because we don't want to make mistakes or get hurt. But in the game of life, if you want to become financially free and successful, you need to be willing to take some well-thought-out chances. For example, let's talk about two important opportunities, investing in the stock market and starting your own business. Investing in the stock market. Imagine the stock market as a place where you can buy a small part of big companies. When these companies do well, the value of the part you own, called a stock, goes up, and you can sell it for more money. However, there's also a chance that the value could go down and you might lose some money. The fear of losing money might hold you back from investing, but if you learn about the companies and choose wisely, the potential to grow your money is much higher than leaving it in a savings account. It's like taking a chance to win more coins in the game, and sometimes you'll succeed. Starting a business. Imagine you have a great idea for a lemonade stand. You need to invest some money to buy lemons, sugar, and cups. There's a risk that not many people will buy your lemonade and you'll lose your investment. But if you make delicious lemonade and find lots of customers, you'll make a profit. Starting a business involves some risk, but if you work hard and make smart decisions, you could build something successful and make a lot of money. It's like starting a new quest in the game, and if you complete it well, you'll earn valuable rewards. Number five, instructing that home ownership represents the ultimate investment. Owning a home is often seen as a sign that someone is doing well financially, but it's not always the best way to invest your money. While having a home can be a good part of a smart money plan, it's not the only way to grow your wealth. When you own a home, you have to pay for things like the mortgage, the loan you took to buy the house, and the upkeep, all the repairs and maintenance it needs. Plus, there are other ongoing expenses like property taxes and insurance. Sometimes people expect that the value of their home will go up over time, making it a good investment. But that's not always the case. The housing market can be unpredictable, and there's no guarantee that your home will increase in value as much as you hope. The problem is that some folks get so focused on buying a house that they forget about other investment opportunities. They put all their money into their home and miss out on chances to make their money grow in different ways. To build a strong financial future, it's essential to diversify, which means spreading your money across different types of investments. That way, if one investment doesn't do well, you have others to fall back on. So, having a home is like having a responsibility or a liability. You have to keep paying for it regularly. It only becomes a true asset when you decide to sell it and make a profit. Until then, it's not helping your money grow unless the housing market is doing really well. Number six. Promoting a lack of enthusiasm for continued learning and skills improvement. Learning doesn't stop once we finish formal education like school or college. If we believe that we don't need to learn anymore after that, it can hold back our personal and financial growth. Today, the world is changing quickly with new technology and ways of doing things, so it's super important to keep learning and improving our skills. Sometimes, the way we were taught in school can make us think that learning is only for young people or those who are still in school. But that's not true. We can keep learning throughout our lives and it's actually really good for us. When we keep learning, we become more valuable to employers and in the job market. That means we have a better chance of getting higher paying jobs and earning more money. The world we live in is always changing. And if we don't keep learning, we might get left behind. But if we embrace continuous learning, we'll have the tools we need to adapt to these changes and even take advantage of new opportunities. Here's the exciting part. Learning doesn't have to be limited to academic stuff like history or math. There are so many other things we can learn that can make a huge difference in our lives. We can learn about personal finance, which means understanding how to manage our money wisely 
invest it, and make it grow. We can learn about starting and running a business, which can give us the freedom to be our own boss and create something amazing. The best part is that nowadays, there are plenty of resources available to help us learn on our own. We don't need to sit in a classroom to learn new things. We can find online courses, tutorials, and books that can teach us anything we want to know. Number 7. Encouraging Cultural or Societal Norms That Foster Inadequate Financial Habits Our society and the culture we live in have a big impact on how we handle money. There are certain customs and ideas in our community that encourage us to spend money in ways that can harm our financial well-being. Some of these habits include showing off what we have, trying to match our neighbor's possessions, or not talking openly about money. These habits become like a program in our minds. They make us think it's normal to make bad financial decisions and also make us feel like it's not good to try to build wealth. We might feel pressured to buy things we don't really need just to impress others, and we might avoid talking about money because it's seen as impolite. But it's essential to recognize these patterns and question them. By doing so, we can start to change our behavior and develop better financial habits. Instead of focusing on showing off, we can prioritize saving and investing wisely. We can talk openly about money and learn from others who are successful in building wealth. By challenging these old ways of thinking, we can make smarter choices with our money and work towards a more secure and prosperous future. It's about understanding that true financial health comes from making informed decisions and not just following what everyone else does. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload and you can enjoy the excellent content I send your way.